Hi, and welcome to this overview of resource management for manufacturing in SAP Business One 9.1. If your business is manufacturing, then you might be using the material requirements planning to balance your supply and demand and look at potential purchase orders and production orders. Well, in SAP Business One 9.1, the team at SAP has also introduced resource management for manufacturing. So this gives us the ability to do a, what is essentially a rough cut capacity plan. So to look at not just production orders and purchase orders, but to look at things like machine time, machine capacity, labor capacity, and other constraints that we might have in our production planning, and to be able to map out those potential bottlenecks in our resources, our machinery, our labor, and other items. So let's go in and take a look at this new piece of functionality. We'll open up the resource module, and we can see resource master data, resource capacity, and the ability to set internal daily capacities. Let's open up the resource master data screen. And I'm going to call up a packaging machine. Now I'm not going to go into this screen in great detail, but I am going to touch on a few elements here just for demonstration purposes. The resource master data screen is used to set up the machinery, the labor and other items which may become constrained by capacity. So in this instance, I've got a packaging machine. The resource type is machine. It could also obviously be labor or other at this point in time. And I've got resource group is also machine. It's time based. The machine capacity could also be based on units or it could be based on um, actual turns, for example. But in this instance, I've made it time based. I've got my issue method, back flush or manual. I've got resource allocation. Now, resource allocation, I will touch on briefly. I can issue the resource allocation on due date or automatic. This is important in terms of my capacity planning. If the resource allocation is automatic, the system will try and schedule in SAP Business One the actual production orders on available days to be available before the due dates of the production order or the finished goods. Whereas if I leave the resource allocation to on due date, the system will simply try and manufacture the goods on the due date. I've set up some standard costs in the system here, electricity, maintenance, and water. This is obviously the ability to add predefined costs against the actual packaging machine. I've got capacity data inside the machine and planning data. So in terms of my planning data, I've said that Monday through Thursday, there are two shifts of eight hours, equal to 18, uh, 16 hours of capacity per day. And on a Friday, we do some maintenance. So I've only got one shift of eight hours being total capacity of eight hours on that day. So this will form the basis of the capacity planning. How much capacity does that machine have? Obviously with other SAP Business One screens, very useful information that could be entered like properties against the machine, attachments, technical drawing, specifications, remarks, etc. But for now, for purposes of this demonstration, let's just focus on that planning data. Now let's have a quick look at a bill of materials in SAP Business One. And what I'll do, I'll bring up a very basic bill of materials that I've created for a bicycle, a racing bike. So what I have on the racing bike, I've got a bicycle frame, two carbon wheels, a bicycle uh, crankshaft, and here are the new aspects, these resource aspects here, the packaging machine and the labor for the packaging machine. These have been entered as resources against this bill of materials. So this is where we'll start to look at the capacity constraints. So now let's go in and let's actually look at the new and all important resource capacity screen. So I've called the screen up. Again, a number of options available to me. I could look just by certain resource properties, resource types, resource groups, date ranges, etc. To keep it simple, I'm just going to look at a one month time period from today's date to the 2nd of March. And I'm going to look just at one machine. Obviously, I could have multiple machines and labor, etc. against this. But for the simplicity of demonstration purposes, I'm looking at the packaging machine. Now, as we look towards the center of the screen here, this is the all important element. We've got available time, internal time, committed and consumed. So as I look at today, I can see that I've got eight hours available and I'm committed for eight hours, leaving zero hours available, which is okay. 
Tomorrow, however, I have an issue. I've got a bottleneck tomorrow. My bottleneck tomorrow is associated with the fact that I've got 25 hours committed. I've got 16 hours available, sorry, 16 hours internal, which is the available capacity of the machine in total, which gives me net available of minus nine. So just to run that through with you again, internal is the actual hours available on the machine, 16 hours tomorrow, two by eight hour shifts. 25 hours is production orders, which are in the system. I've got minus nine available. So clearly there's an issue tomorrow with production. I can drill down and I can look at the production orders in question. I can then drill down to the actual order to review that order and review its due date. Now I have a couple of options. I could either look at the internal hours and increasing the internal hours. So ask people to work a third shift or to increase the number of hours or to reset the daily internal capacity or I could shift around one or both of these works orders. So I might drill into this works order. I might give Jason Butler a call and ask if we can move this particular order to the end of the week because we have very limited capacity. Now what I've done is I've shifted that works order, but we still have an issue. We're still three hours short on the capacity. So then I might need to increase the internal capacity by asking people to work some overtime. So what we've seen there is the ability to quickly overview the available capacity on the machine, to see that there's a bottleneck. I've then opened up two particular production orders and I've shifted one of those production orders further in time. I've moved it through to the end of the week. We can see it's now here at the end of the week. And then what I've done is I've refreshed the screen to see that we still have a bottleneck, but now the bottleneck is only three hours. So now maybe what we'll do is look at changing the internal or available capacity on the machine by asking people to work some overtime. What we've seen there is a fairly simple example, but I hope it illustrates to you the point that we can very successfully do our resource and capacity planning inside SAP Business One. Let's recap on that very briefly. What we did is we looked at the resource master data and the setting up of the machines, labor or other, as potential resource capacity constraints in our manufacturing. We then went in, we looked at a bill of materials and the fact that those resources were against the bill of materials. And then we looked at that resource capacity planning where there was a bottleneck, we were able to shift around that particular uh, production order or to look at our internal capacity and how we might increase that capacity. There are other uh, new features and functions on uh, the production planning in SAP 9.1, but today we wanted to focus more specifically on that resource management. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please don't forget that there are lots of other demonstrations available on our website at leveragetech.com.au. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.